Happy Halloween and welcome to the Rocky Horror Telenovela. Noche de Terror Rocky Brujas is a 1987 TV movie from Mexico that rips off the Rocky Horror Show and the Rocky Horror Picture Show, and has a very weird relationship to its source material. Sometimes it uses songs directly taken from the Spanish translation of the show. Sometimes it reuses dialogue almost verbatim. The master is not yet married, nor do I think he ever will be. And sometimes it does whatever the heck it wants. We'll get to him later. For now, let's give ourselves over to absolute confusion. This is... We start with our narrator slash criminologist preparing us for what we're about to witness. Están a punto de ser testigos de una experiencia extraña y sobrenatural. <laughs> he is the best part of this special. And then the opening number. She isn't kidding. Thankfully for my gringo brain, the song doesn't go into obscure references to Hispanic B-movies and mostly sticks to more universal characters like Frankenstein, the Wolfman, and Superman. After the song concludes, we go back to the narrator for an almost line-for-line -line recreation of the speech from the movie. I would like, uh, if I may, to take you on a strange journey. Me gustaría, de ser posible, invitarlos a un macabro viaje por el campo. It seemed a fairly ordinary night. Era si aquella una noche tranquila. It's true also that the spare tire they were carrying was badly in need of some air. Nadie advirtió que una de las llantas del vehículo que conducían tenía poco aire. <laughs> Yo la ponche. Okay, that part's new. Once he's had his fun, and he does have his fun, we transition to Brad and Janet, or rather Chelo y Carlos, as their car breaks down. They decide to stop by the castle they saw earlier that night to use their phone. So in any Rocky Horror screening, Brad is rightfully called... But here... He's just a dork. Look, there's still a light on. Then comes the Spanish version of Over at the Frankenstein Place. <laughs> Afterwards, the two reach the door of the castle, owned by... Dr. Alaska Frankenstein. And now we meet our riffraff, or Giorgio. He's an uncomfortable character. Giorgio lets the couple in, and they meet some very strange characters. That'll be coming back in 45 seconds. We move on to the time warp, or rather, the dance of the toad. I have no idea why it's a toad dance. Perhaps it is you who are the toad. Probably my rudest phantom reference. Other than that, apparently, the translator didn't have a time-related Spanish phrase to match up with time warp. That's the best I can find, anyway. You got that right. For our visuals, we're treated to El Ballet de Rocky, which is a Rocky Horror cast and gives us a second Chelo y Carlos. Two for one. Some Rocky Horror lips make an appearance. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, so we can cross that off the list. And once the song ends, we get another appearance by the narrator. A ver su de rock You're not cool, Dad. At last, we are graced with the appearance of Alaska Frankenfurter, played by famous Spanish-Mexican singer Alaska. So, explanation time. 
Apparently this is a form of Spanish pun, but even the native speaker who helped me with this said it was weird. You can find something similar in the original stage show. Unlock a mind, unmind a lock. It's the same as the beginning of the end. Do you follow? No. But it's still very oddly executed. Con quien tengo el honor? Eh, Carlos Cavalli. Imprometida. Chelo derecho. Mucho gusto, Carlos. Enchante, ma petite. And I guess this program is trilingual now. Good for it. A skeleton costumed man runs up to Alaska and tells her that the machine is ready. Se imaginan? Vamos juntos a romper la barrera del tiempo. Será, será como el fin del mundo. This is just a segue to a completely unrelated song. Yeah, it's at this point that the show mostly steers away from Rocky Horror, with a notable exception coming up soon. It's an Alaska song called El Fin del Mundo, or The End of the World. Or it's a Bengal song called Walk Like an Egyptian. In all seriousness, it's a very fun and catchy song. Because the stalling of public transportation is the most harrowing part of Revelation. Giorgio lets slip that the machine mentioned earlier switches brains, and Chelo and Carlos try to leave. Alaska seeks help from our magenta in Colombia for the night. Okay, the one thing Alaska has over Tim Curry is her incredible face palms. Chelo is taken away to the special parlor, and we are treated to a song that has nothing to do with anything about waiting for a lover to call and come over. If you really want to find a link to Rocky Horror, there is this line from the stage show. She don't wanna call you Speaking on the telephone. But it's a stretch. Back to the narrator. Okay, I could be misinterpreting the phrase used here, but I really want to believe they just made a reference to... Come in. And now we randomly, but gloriously, transition to the Spanish version of Hot Patootie. And at last, at long last. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. I'm gonna be honest here, the program has just peaked, and the rest is mostly nonsense that's not related to Rocky Horror in any way, so I'll try to speed through it. They try out the brain switching device, which works. Yo tengo suerte. Tú tienes suerte. Todos tenemos suerte. Cut to a song, cut back to the narrator. Trust me, I gave up trying to understand this a long time ago. See? Something appears to go wrong with the machine and everyone runs for their lives. Chelo gets her brain back. Somehow. Never explained. And once the couple have fled, the rest of the cast laughs at their expense. Turns out it was all just a Halloween trick. A final song and the credits roll. And that was Noche de Terror y Brujas, and who oh boy was it a trip. The Rocky Horror Picture Show and the Rocky Horror Show are both campy and ridiculous, but they have a sense of coherence, and when they don't, there's a certain charm to it. This is just pure insanity from beginning to end. And I love it. I've posted the whole thing to this channel with English subtitles. I highly recommend you check it out. Until next time, I don't have a catchphrase.